friends? We're back. We're talking statics again. We're going to do resultant vectors one more time. And this one's interesting because we're going to do it. We're going to do a problem. We're going to do it two different ways. We're going to find the resultant of these two vectors, F1 and F2. Pull it on this crate here. And we're going to use two different methods. We're going to use method number one, the triangle rule, and method number two, we're going to use Cartesian coordinates. So we've already talked about those, so it should be easy, right? Now the thing is that we should work it both ways, but what should we get? We should get the exact same answer, okay? Let's see if we do. Now remember, it's gonna be in different form. This one's gonna be in the polar coordinate form, and this one is gonna be in Cartesian form, in IJK form. But we can go and convert back and forth and check, make sure they're both the same. So let's see if we can figure this out, okay? So find the resultant of these two vectors. Let's use the triangle rule first, okay? So if you remember the triangle rule, we can also call that the tip to tail rule. So we're going to take and construct a triangle out of these two uh, vectors here. Okay. Now I'm going to start with vector F1. Here we go, vector F1. There he is, F1. And F1 is 90 pounds. Okay, there's the magnitude of F1. Now I'm going to take this guy and put him whoop, over there. Now there's a new thing. What is that? Okay. That's just a slope triangle. It's just another way to write um, an angle, okay? And remember, there's some special triangles. The ones that I can remember, I can remember the three, four, five triangle, right? Special triangle is the one where the uh, all the sides are like, you know, whole numbers. I can remember the uh, mm, 24, 25, 7 triangle. And then there's one more, and that's the uh, 12, 13, and 5 triangle, okay? So, well, th this really should be 5, 12, 13. This should be 7, 24, not, not like that. There you go. So those are the three that I can remember, and those are the ones you'll see most often in the statics books used. So uh, just a little helpful hint there. Now, if that confuses you, then do something simple and say, okay, this angle here is the same as that angle there. Right? And so if I just do tan theta equals for this little triangle opposite mm, 4 divided by adjacent, so 4 over 3, I find that theta is going to equal 53.13 degrees. So if it's easier for you to convert a slope triangle just into an angle, then just do that because it you get the exact same answer. So, And I'm going to show you a different way. I'm going to show you how to use just these numbers here when we do the second method. But for this method, I think I'm just going to use this. So um, this angle is 53.13 degrees, okay, right here. Now, how, do you, how did I know that that was that without using my calculator? Because this is used so often in statics that I know that, that 4 over 3 inverse tan is 53.13, and 3 over 4 is 36.87, which is that minus 90. Okay, so I'm going to move this vector over there. Here we go. Tip to tail, tip to tail. There it is. That is the um, F2. Um, vector F2, and his magnitude is 100. Okay, and then, of course, our resultant vector is going to be like this. There's our resultant vector. Okay, so let's see. What angles do we know over here? Well... We know that um, from horizontal up is 53.13. So this angle here is 53.13 degrees. So let's see, that, that angle in there must be 90 plus 36.87, which is 126.87 degrees. Okay, so what do we have here? We have, we have, um, Side, angle, side. Aha, law of cosines, right? The SAS law. So let's see. Um, let's see. Let's go up here. So we're going to have, this is vector r up here. So we're going to have um, r squared is equal to, here we go, law of cosines, 90 squared plus 100 squared minus 2 times 90 times 100 times the cosine of the angle between whoops, not two, how about 126.87 degrees, okay? Now remember when we put this in our calculator, this is squared over here, so we need to take the square root, okay? So when you do that, R is 
is equal to 170 pounds, but we don't know what angle it's at. We don't know the angle yet, because to write a complete, remember, polar notation vector, that's what we're going to get from the triangle rule, is a polar vector, then I need a direction here. Well, I need this angle right here, right? Let's call this angle F2, right? Because it goes with um, side F2 over here, right? Because I need from horizontal up to the vector R. So I think mm, I can use law of sines if I do two things that went together. Oh, and I do. The R goes here and this go together. So 170 is to the sine of 126.87 as that goes with this. 100 is to the sine of angle F2, right? Okay, the angle that goes with F2. So let's see, we have to put this in our calculator. So angle F2 is equal to, here we go, clear 100 divided by 170 equals times the sine of 126.87 equals 0.471 and then inverse sine of that gives me 28.07 degrees, okay? And that goes here, 28.07 degrees. And so this is my vector R. This is answer one for, you know, way number one over here. That's the triangle rule result, and that's going to be in polar notation. Okay. Number two down here, we need it in Cartesian notation, right? Remember, Cartesian is just is the IJK form of the vector, right? So we got to do that. So that's, that's going to be a little bit, uh, I think it's easier to do. So let's try that. I'm going to make me a little bit of room over here. Okay. Now let's go back right quick and talk about this slope triangle one more time. Okay. We know that this angle is 53.13. We know where that came from, right? Well, <clears throat> this angle here and this angle here are the same angles. Okay. So if I call this theta, if I call that theta, right? It, cosine of theta is equal to what? So Katoa, adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine would be equal to three over five. Okay, and conversely, sine would be equal to four over five. Okay, now we remember from the last video, we came up with an equation to convert from polar notation to Cartesian, and it went like this, vector f, right, was equal to um, f cosine theta i hat plus f sine theta j hat, okay? So look, if I just multiply f times cosine theta, instead of putting cosine theta in, I can put in three fifths. If I, instead of putting sine theta in, I can put in four fifths. So it's just a kind of a shortcut way to write the same thing. Now, if that confuses you, don't worry about it. You can still use the 53.13, and you can just put F cosine of 53.13, right? But if you put cosine of 53.13 in your calculator and hit solve, you'll get 0.6. Well, guess what 3 fifths is? 0.6. It's the same thing. So whatever you're comfortable with, I think you, this will save you a lot of time once you get used to it, okay? So what we need to do here is we need to write our two vectors, F1 and F2, in Cartesian form. Okay, so here we go. F1 is equal to, okay, now vector F1 is completely in the x direction. He has no y component, right? So F1 is going to be something like this, 90 i hat. That's it. Well, if you want to be really complete, you could put plus 0 j hat, right? And that whole thing is in pounds. So that's vector F1 in Cartesian form. I don't have to break him into components because he only has one component. It's completely in the x direction. Now this guy here is going to have two components. He's got a component here and a component here, right? He's got an x component. We'll call this Fx. And we've got a y component, Fy. Okay. 
Now I'm going to use this form here to write the two components for this guy. So this guy is the cosine side and this guy is the sine side. Okay, so here we go. F2 is equal to, so for the cosine, for Fx, I'm going to use this. Okay, and again, you could use 100 cosine of 53.13. Same thing, okay? Plus 4 fifths um, times 100 j hat, and that is in pounds, okay? Now I can rewrite this right quick. Let me just solve this. So 0 0.6 times 100 is 60, okay? Plus 0.8 times 100 is 80, okay? So there's my vector F2 in Cartesian form, okay? So how do I add F1 plus F2? Piece of cake, man. Add the apples to the apples and the oranges to the oranges, right? Okay, so here we go. Let's call it FR for resultant vector. So 90 plus 60, 150, I have, and 0 plus 80 is 80 J hat in pounds, okay? So that is your answer in Cartesian form. That's number two over here, right? That's this guy. Now, do you believe me when I tell you that this and that are the same thing? Oh, they don't look the same. Let's just check it out. Here we go. Let's try this. This is 150 in the x direction, so uh, 150, and 80 in the y direction, so uh, 80, which would make our r vector here, right? So if we have our calculator, right, here's r. Let's see. Um, clear, 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 150 squared plus 80 squared equals square root of that equals 170. It's the same. And then this angle here I could use, right, this angle I could use tan. So tan theta equals opposite, 80 over adjacent, 150. Let's see what that is. 80 divided by 150 equals inverse tan of that is equal to 28.07. It's the same thing. So this and this are exact same thing. And when we know how to go from this to that and from that back to this, right? Using that equation over there, okay? So it's kind of neat to see two... Um, two different ways to work the same problem. Now, if you ask me which one's easier, this wins every time, right? Because if I had five vectors over there, this is gonna be horrible, right? But five vectors like this, piece of cake, add all the i's together, add all the j's together, done, right? This is my go-to method here, so. All right, gang, I hope that helps, and I'll see you on the next video.